Semyon Mogilevich, also known as Don Semyon, or the Brainy Don, is one of the most powerful mobsters in the world and was on the FBI's 10 most wanted list for many years. Mogilevich is dubbed the most dangerous mobster. And today, we'll be taking a look at the notorious life of Semyon Mogilevich. Semyon Mogilevich was born to Jewish parents in Kiev, Ukraine in 1946. He went on to get a bachelor's degree in economics from the University of Lviv in 1968. This is one of the rare instances when someone gets their full return on a university degree, given the crimes that Mogilevich pulled off were pretty smart. Terrible, yes, but also smart. After graduating, Mogilevich joined a crime family based in the Soviet Union in the early 70s and kicked off his criminal career by trading foreign money which was banned in the Soviet Union. As a result, he got imprisoned for currency-related offenses. They say prison makes you likelier to commit a crime. And if we take a look at Mogilevich's life, it's probably true because he joined a Russian mafia organization called Sodsvenskia Bratva upon his release. Being a close friend of the chairman of the organization, Sergei Mikhailov, Mogilevich's criminal career took off. Lots of Jews in the 80s were looking to emigrate from Kiev, and this was seen as an opportunity by Mogilevich. He made deals with a large number of those Jews to sell their jewelry and other valuables at market value and to forward the proceeds to the families. However, he ended up pocketing the proceeds. This, along with many other minor offenses, helped Mogilevich become the key money laundering contact for the Sulzvenskia Bratva. Given his contacts with at least two organized crime families, Mogilevich had to keep the money flowing, and that meant taking the business overseas. Over the years, he's managed to establish over 100 front companies and bank accounts in at least 27 nations worldwide. The FBI believed that Mogilevich was involved with a company that sold arms, nuclear material, oil deals, trade prostitution, and drug trafficking, among many others. Mogilevich's first investments overseas were in a legal business in Israel in the 1990s. He also got married in the 90s to a Hungarian woman, Katalin Papp. It was unsurprising to see Mogilevich invest in Hungarian enterprises after getting his passport from marriage and settling for a few years in a villa near Budapest. The brainy Don bought a local armament factory producing anti-aircraft guns. His Hungarian Mafia also helped him build close ties with the People's Republic of China Mafia. Income Bank was one of the major private banks in Russia, and Mogilevich managed to take control of it in 1994. This was made possible after he got through to Vladimir Vinogradov, the head of the bank, and made a deal, which gave him access to the global financial market. Within four years, Mogilevich had managed to gain enough profit from the bank before it completely collapsed in 1998 because of money laundering accusations. Europe was also at the center of one of the largest tax evasion scandals at the time, involving Income Bank and the Bank of New York. Mogilevich was again instrumental in all of this, and masterminded a scheme that involved selling untaxed heating oil instead of the highly taxed vehicle fuel. All of this resulted in a loss of more than $5 billion for the Czech Republic, one of the many countries scammed. There were attempts to assassinate the journalist to expose the fraud, too. Around the same time, Mogilevich was supposed to meet his close friend Sergei Mikhailov in Prague. The event was planned to be a birthday party for a mutual deputy, and the police were tipped about Mogilevich's presence at the party, so they decided to raid it. There were reports that the Shonstevo Mafia was planning to kill Mogilevich. Thanks to the close ties he'd built with a senior figure in the Czech police, Mogilevich was warned in advance and didn't show up. But many prostitutes owned by him were arrested, along with other party-goers, and were expelled from the country. As a result of this fiasco, Mogilevich himself was banned from the Czech Republic for 10 years. The UK also banned him from the country, declaring Mogilevich to be dangerous, and Hungary changed his status to persona non grata. The world's an enormous place for someone with the resources of Mogilevich, and that's why his next target was the North American continent. Putting his economic skills to use, Mogilevich targeted the Toronto Stock Exchange. The Russian Mafia, with Mogilevich at the helm, was behind a publicly traded firm, YBM Magnex International. Here, using his economics degree and some of the natural deceptiveness he'd picked up on, 
Mogilovich forged documents for the Securities and Exchange Commission and managed to pump the stock, resulting in a 2,000% increase. This whole episode was constantly being monitored and finally exposed by Canadian journalists. As a result, the FBI raided the headquarters of the firm in Pennsylvania, resulting in the stock of YBM plummeting for over a billion to almost nothing overnight. At the same time, though, Mogilovich was already meeting with one of the famous Italian crime families in the USA, the Genovese family, and brokered a deal to dump U.S. toxic waste in the Chernobyl region with the help of the Red Mafia. Semyon Mogilovich has been accused of multiple crimes, and most of them relate to money laundering, tax evasion, and other financial crimes. However, he's also been involved in the drug trafficking business, and according to many sources, Mogilovich was controlling everything that came in and out of the Sheremetyevo International Airport of Moscow. Oh, it's truly a smuggler's dream to have that kind of control. Not only this, but Mogilovich also purchased a bankrupt Central Asian airline for millions of dollars and used it only to traffic heroin out of the Golden Triangle. That is so, so crazy. This was in line with his control over the Moscow airport and helped him to expand his drug trafficking empire as well. His intelligence schemes, coupled together with his disregard for the law, make him an incredibly dangerous mobster. This is considered one of the most prominent features of Mogilovich's fearsome reign as the boss of all bosses. He controls a huge network of natural gas that links Russia and Eastern Europe. Fun fact, the main gas pipeline that connects Russia with the rest of Europe is known as Bratsvo, named after the Mafia itself. Mogilovich's company was exporting and importing petroleum for many years during the 1990s. And then in 2002, he managed to expand it a lot more, but not under his own name. The main intermediary between Turkmenistan and Ukraine, ETG, was founded by an Israeli lawyer named Zev Gordon, who has represented Mogilovich for more than two decades. The dots aren't difficult to connect in this one. At 75 years of age, Mogilovich resides in Russia as a free man. Given the nature of the ties between the two countries, the U.S. can't extradite Mogilovich, who lies under the protection of Putin. According to the former Ukrainian President Leonid Kuchma, Putin and Mogilovich have been close friends for a long time. He's been removed from the FBI Most Wanted list, but the Bureau still has a reward of up to $5 million for information that could lead to the arrest and or conviction of Mogilovich. That's a wrap for this video. Do you have any questions about the notorious life of Semyon Mogilovich? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.